Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. A couple of months ago, I was able to pay back the kindness and effort of some of my mods by giving them their own explained episodes, and now I have the opportunity to do so for another. Today, I'd like to give a big thanks to Kale Dragon for being one of the first people to believe in me and put their faith in my abilities, so much so that they've invested their time into making this community into what it is today, and I'll be expressing that gratitude with Gustos. While the theme premiered in the TCG as part of the August 2011 core set, Generation Force, it's much more tied with the dual terminal storyline. They show up in Age 2.0 and are the peaceful denizens of a marshland that's bristling with natural resources. That gets invaded by the Gishki to steal those natural resources, as well as accomplishing an even more devious task. In fact, I've recently wrapped covering Age 1.0 in my History of the Dual Terminal series, so if you're curious about everything that leads up to this, check this card for more. However, in Paper Yu-Gi-Oh!, their reputation is… mixed. While never taking to the top tables, it has a fair share of powerful plays that give it a unique flavor. So let's connect with our animal companions so we can get to know them, see how these blustery beasts take flight, then find out if there's any help out there that can give us a second wind. It's time to team up with Gustos. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and there's no better way to get there than on our Duel Runners. Our next stop is 40k, which means Leo and Luna Explained, where we'll be covering Ancient Fairy Dragon's companions, the Power Tool Dragons, Morphtronics, and any other cards that are more than meets the eye. We've also got our Discord, where yes, someone has had visual confirmation of my existence out in the wild. I also have a Twitch where you can join me for viewer duels, progression polls polls, and chaos draft polls for the foreseeable future. And don't forget about my Patreon, where you can gain access to my videos early, reach some of these milestones, as well as helping to determine which videos I make. Thank you all so much for watching, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with Gustos? Well, they're a series of wind attribute monsters that are primarily psychic and winged beast, with a smattering of thunders and a few extra types that we'll get into later. They're focused on synchro summoning, using a number of monsters with floating effects to replace themselves, loading up your grave to use as a resource to pull synchro material out of, as well as fuel for other sundry effects. Let's start with the winged beast monsters. Gusto Eagle is a level 1 tuner monster with 200 attack and 400 defense, and when this card is destroyed by a battle and sent to the grave, you can special summon a level 4 or lower non-tuner Gusto monster from your deck. Now, in most cases, I would lament that an effect like this is severely outdated. In a world where effect removal is both plentiful and of high quality, having to be destroyed by battle is about as archaic as it gets. But in this theme, it's one of your greatest boons, and we'll get into why that is later on. For now though, we need to get this little lad to school, because their spelling could use some work. Gusto Falco is a level 2 tuner monster with 600 attack and 1400 defense, and when this face-up card on the field is sent to the grave except by battle, you can special summon a Gusto monster from your deck in face-down defense position. Notably, the effect can miss timing, so while this trigger seems super open-ended, you can't link, sync, or fuse this away to get the float. It has to be sent to the grave by some kind of removal effect. And it has to be at chain link 1, and it has to be the last thing that happened during that chain link, or else you'll get nothing. Thankfully, Falco here will have a lot of chances to improve on their design, though they're are going to be some growing pains along the way. Gusto Griffin is a level 2 monster with 800 attack and 300 defense, and if this card is sent from the hand to the grave, you can special summon a Gusto monster from your deck. Now, this effect does not miss timing, so if you discard this card, or it gets dropped from your hand to the grave any other way, you get access to any Gusto, including another copy of itself if you're so inclined. Which I've gotta say, is freaking sweet. Gusto Kodor is a level 3 monster with 1000 attack and 400 defense, and when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the grave, you can special summon a Wind Psychic monster with 1500 or less defense from your deck. Now, currently there's only 26 targets for this effect, but even if there were more, it's not like this effect is going to get off the ground anytime soon. We lack a critical mass of attack buffs to make sure Kodor is big enough to trigger this effect often, and since what Kodor destroys has to hit the grave, we can't just gift our opponent some tokens and run over them. We're basically on the hook for giving our opponent a monster like Eagle using something like Creature Swap, then running that over, though the upside here is that we'll get two triggers, which is a nice payoff, though a rather cumbersome amount of setup. 
Also, there's just something really cruel about needing to give your opponent a small bird so you can run over it with a bigger bird. But I guess that's just how carrion feeders carry on. Gusto Guldo is a level 3 tuner monster with 500 attack and defense, and when this card is sent from the field to the grave, you can special summon a level 2 or lower Gusto monster from your deck. There's a lot of similarities to Falco here, but Guldo can trigger from being destroyed by battle as well. In fact, it's probably the best way to trigger it, since this is another monster that misses timing. But thankfully, we're not really spoiled for choice. Eagle and Falco make for excellent targets depending on what you expect your opponent to have in store, which can in turn float into even more Gustos, something we're going to be seeing a lot of from this theme moving forward. But since our pool of summonable targets is so small, just make sure you don't get too carried away with it. Gusto Vedir is a level 3 tuner monster with 600 attack and 1000 defense. And if a face-up Gusto monster on the field is destroyed by battle or sent to your grave, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if this card is normal or special summoned, you can send a Gusto monster from your deck to the grave, then you can special summon a Gusto monster from your hand. You can tell this is a recent piece of support because it's got a lot of text, and none of it misses timing. Incredible. About as incredible as how this card slots into the deck. It triggers off of any Gusto being sent from the field to the grave, so giving your Gustos to your opponent really is the play here. It sets up your grave and summons another Gusto alongside it. It can set up more blockers, or if it's your turn, a non-tuner to make a variety of synchros. And you can do this because it triggers any time a Gusto is sent from the field to the grave, not just by battle. So linking off your normal summons for Salomon Grey All Mirage is all you need to get this up and running. They haven't been part of the team for very long, but that hasn't kept them from being a Vadir friend. That's all of our winged beasts. Beasts, let's take a look at a few thunders. Gusto Squirro is a level 2 tuner monster with 0 attack and 1800 defense, and when this card is destroyed by a card effect and sent to the grave, you can special summon a level 5 or higher Gusto monster from your deck. Yeah, despite all the little units we've talked about so far, we do have a few higher leveled main deck monsters, and they have some wacky effects. And summoning them for free off of Squirro is very nice, but we're gonna have to find a way to trigger the effect in the first place. But hey, Torrential Tribute is at 3, so go ahead, be known as the person who blasted a squirrel with the power of a hurricane. I'm sure everyone will be totally okay with that. Oh, who am I kidding? Dino players destroy baby Sarasaurus every chance they get. Yu-Gi-Oh players have no shame. We also have Gusto Thunbolt, a level 4 monster with 1500 attack and 1200 defense, and at the end of the battle phase, if this card is in the grave because it was destroyed by battle and sent to the grave this turn, you can banish a Gusto monster from your grave to special summon a Wind Psychic monster with 1500 or less defense from your deck. Which is the same parameters as Kodor, but you'll find that this card is much easier to trigger. Needing to be destroyed by battle is, once again, a little frustrating, especially if we have to rely on our opponent, and the slight delay means we can't chain whatever we summon into more plays during the battle phase, but I guess that's the trade-off for being the first Gusto we've talked about so far that has a somewhat decent stat line. But now, my question is, does Thunbolt have a unicorn horn naturally, or do they just make him wear it as a little lightning rod? Alright, that's all of our animal companions, let's talk about the psychics we pair them with. First is Kamui, Hope of Gusto, a level 2 flip monster with 200 attack and 1000 defense, and when flipped, Kamui special summons a Gusto tuner monster from your deck, and we've already seen how easy it is to float into a ton of Gustos off the back of a single tuner. And hey, if you're lucky and Kamui survives, you can use that tuner to go into your extra deck. But considering that stat line, I wouldn't hold out too much hope. Winda, Priestess of Gusto, is a level 2 monster with 1000 attack and 400 defense, and when this card is destroyed by battle with an opponent's attacking monster and sent to the grave, you can special summon a Gusto tuner monster from your deck. Very similar to Kamui, but has to be destroyed by battle, whereas Kamui just has to be flipped. And you can't even run Winda into an opponent's monster for the trigger, because it specifies the opponent's monster has to be attacking. Honestly, I don't get the hype. People keep calling for Winda to be banned, but I don't- Oh. Pilika, Descendant of Gusto, is a level 3 monster with 1000 attack and 1500 defense. And when this card is normal or special summoned, you can target a Wind Tuner monster in your grave and special summon that target in face-up defense position, but its effects are negated. And if this effect is activated, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except Wind Monsters. Now, this is some nifty support. Once your grave is set up, this card's a one-card synchro that can access a wide variety of monsters, provided their attribute is win. 
and because Pilika has just the right levels, you can slap him onto the board with emergency teleport. I'm telling you, once punks reban e Telly with all their shenanigans, not having access to this card as easily is going to be a tough Pilika to swallow. Calm, Serenity of Gusto is a level 4 monster with 1700 attack and 1100 defense, and once per turn it you can shuffle two Gusto monsters from your grave into your main deck to draw a card. Thankfully this is done as cost, so while there are some parallels to be made with Pot of Avarice, it's not quite as interruptible. They also do a fantastic job of recycling your Gustos, because trust me, there are some long chains of monsters floating into one another, and being able to reset those resources while drawing you a card, and having some decent attack power is a welcome addition. So if your resources ever get low, just keep calm and carry on. Musto, Oracle of Gusto, is a level 4 monster with 1800 attack and 900 defense, and once per turn you can target a Gusto monster in your grave and a face-up monster on the field. You shuffle the first target into the deck, and if you do, negate the second target's effects until the end phase. Wow, a uh, monster effect negation. On theme. I'm gonna be honest, I did not expect that when I started looking up these cards. This means you can turn off, or at least contest, negation bodies or really annoying floodgate monsters, all while recycling more gustos. Heck, I'd go so far as to say this card is a musto run. Rhee's Whirlwind of Gusto is a level 5 monster with 1900 attack and 1400 defense, and once per turn you can return a card from your hand to the bottom of your deck to target a monster your opponent controls and a face-up Gusto monster you control and switch control of both monsters. Here's one of those higher level Gustos I was talking about earlier and they make for an excellent summoning target whenever you can. Its defense is low enough for Kodor and Thunbolt to summon, Vadir can just drop it out of your hand with its own effect, and of course, we have Squirro. And they come packed with something even better than Creature Swap. Creature Swap, but with targets. True, monsters with targeting protection are a no-go, but what you take isn't as important as what you give, namely, monsters that float. Its effect also has you returning a card from your hand to the deck, which means if you're running any Garnets, Reese is a way to put them into your deck again to get those effects back online. Reese Louise, this card does everything! Windar, Sage of Gusto, is a level 6 monster with 2000 attack and 1000 defense, and when this card destroys a monster by battle and sends it to the grave, you can target a level 3 or lower Gusto monster in your grave and special summon that target in face-up defense position. Now that's a stat line of a monster that should have a battle-based effect. You can get back your tuners and various floaters with this, and is summoned by all the same things that can bring out Reeves. And as far as synchro materials go, level 6 is pretty good, though I guess only being able to summon back level 3s and lowers puts you just short of Barone plays. But if you ever need a level 7 through 9 synchro, this card gives you a pretty good window of opportunity. Alright, that's all of the main deck monsters, now it's time for the dynamic duos that bring it all together. Digusto Falcos is a level 4 synchro monster with 1400 attack and 1200 defense, requiring a tuner and one or more non-tuner Gusto monsters as material. And when this card is synchro summoned, all Gusto monsters currently on the field gain 600 attack. This means Falcos will hit the field at 2000 attack, while giving a much needed attack boost to monsters that want to stick around on the field. Our level 4 and higher psychics will end up having stats from the mid to high 2000s, and Kodor gets to be 1600, which means it might actually hit over something reasonable. Wow! And since the effect doesn't have a hard once per turn cap, this pairs very nicely with D-Synchro, so you can keep stacking that attack gain. From that point on, Falcos doesn't really do anything, but that doesn't mean it can't be used as a way to ladder climb into even more Synchros. After all, some of the best ones need Synchro monsters as material. So no matter what role they fill, Falcos is always out there helping you make those gains. Digusto Guldos is a level 5 synchro monster with 2200 attack and 800 defense, requiring a tuner monster and one or more non-tuner Gusto monsters as material. And once per turn, you can shuffle two Gusto monsters from your grave into the main deck to target a face-up monster your opponent controls and destroy it. <laughs> Alright, that's what I like to see. We've got monster negation in the main deck, removal in the extra, and we're keeping the theme of recycling our Gustos going strong. It does specify you have to shuffle the cards into the main deck, so you're not able to recycle your synchros with this, but many of our other cards don't specify this, so you don't have to worry about running out of synchros anytime soon. Just make sure you're mindful about what you do shuffle back with your other effects to make sure you always have viable targets. 
Many of your Gustos may die to set this card up, but with Die Gusto, you'll be returning the favor. Die Gusto Laplampilica is a level 6 synchro monster with 1900 attack and 2600 defense, requiring a tuner and one or more non tuner Gusto monsters as material. And you can only special summon Die Gusto Laplampilica once per turn. While on the field, your opponent can't target other Gusto synchro monsters you control with card effects. And if this card is synchro summoned, you can special summon a Gusto monster from your hand and one from your deck, but their effects are negated, then immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro summon a Gusto Synchro monster using only those two monsters as material. Also, you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except Wind Ones. Anyone familiar with Ritual Beasts will notice some familiar faces, and that's because that theme is linked in a lot of ways with Gusto and goes a long way to show that the Die Gusto Synchros and the Ulti Ritual Beasts have a lot in common. I mean, this is the only Die Gusto Synchro that has the restriction that you can only special summon them once per turn, but is shared by all the Ritual Beast Tamers. Uh, minor lore diatribe aside, this is an effective way to get more of your Die Gusto monsters onto the field while fueling up your grave. You can pair any monster in hand with an appropriate one from your deck to make whichever one fits the situation, and Laplampilica will keep it safe from targeted interaction so it can't be messed with. I mean, if your opponent had something like that anyway, they'd probably use it on Laplampilica to keep you from having other synchros in the first place, but that's besides the point. Because the more members we can have join this Penguin's Club, the better. Digusto's Freeze is a level 6 synchro monster with 2000 attack and 1300 defense, requiring a tuner monster and one or more non-tuner Gusto monsters as material. And when this card is synchro summoned, you can target a Gusto card in your grave and add it to your hand. Sfreeze can be destroyed by a battle, and your opponent takes any battle damage you would have taken from battles involving face-up Gusto monsters you control. And here's where the entire deck comes together. Without any hard once per turn clauses, our floaters can rush into bigger monsters, get destroyed, and replace themselves. But where we'd normally be limited by the amount of life points in our pool before we had to stop, Sfreeze makes that into a win condition by turning our entire deck into Amazonist Swordswomen. While we don't have an infinite loop of summons like I initially thought, we do have some lines that produce a few monsters that can cause major damage. If possible, we'll want to start with Goldo, crash into a big monster, float into Eagle, who can then float into Pilika. She can then revive the Goldo to set up for next turn, but since the tuner is summoned in defense position, you'll have to either crash in with Pilika to do more damage, or proceed to Synchro Summon in main phase 2. However, at any point during this process, if you have Vidir in hand, you can summon them along with another monster to get in a few more chunks of damage. And of course, Sfreeze is always there to provide that little extra poke you need to close things out. So as long as you can ensure your opponent doesn't have any interaction that can disrupt this loop, winning is going to be a total Sfreeze. But what could possibly follow up this amazing display? Well, we've got one more synchro waiting in the wings, and it's Digusto Eagles, a level 7 synchro monster with 2600 attack and 1800 defense, requiring a tuner and one or more non-tuner Gusto monsters as material, and once per turn during your end phase, you can banish a wind monster from your grave to target a face-down card your opponent controls and destroy that target. Wow, that's... I mean, its attack power is great, that can be very useful, but really only during your end phase? Only face down cards? Dang. I was really going to bat for you, Eagle, and then you pull something like that? At this point, you should just find the extra level and make Stardust Dragon if you're Windlocked for crying out loud. And you still didn't get your name spelled right, come on! But lest you think we're finished with the extra deck, we actually have a few Xyz monsters to cover as part of the Vylon Alliance. Digusto Phoenix is a rank 2 Wind Pyro Xyz monster with 1500 attack and 1100 defense, requiring any two level 2 monsters as material. And once per turn, you can detach an Xyz material from this card to target a face-up wind monster you control, and this turn, it can attack twice during each battle phase. So on an open board, Phoenix can actually get in for a sizable 3000 damage, and if you pair it with anything even slightly bigger, you can get some incredible results. And thankfully, we have a lot of level 2 monsters to work with, and the floating effects needed to manipulate our field so we can maintain the correct levels. 
and if you summon Digusto Falcos after Phoenix, then your opponent is in for a world of hurt. But I'm sure the Laval are pretty steamed right now that they chipped in to make this monster and didn't get any kind of fire support from it. Digusto Emeril is a rank 4 Wind Rock Exceeds monster with 1800 attack and 800 defense, and requires any two level 4 monsters as material. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card, then activate one of these effects. Target three monsters in your grave, shuffle them into the deck, then draw a card, or target a non-effect monster in your grave and special summon it. Now this has a bit more of an even split between the two tribes, recycling materials for Gustos and reviving non-effect monsters for Gem Knights. Crystal's a pretty big boy, so they make for an excellent revival target. But historically, usage of Emerald wasn't restricted to just these two themes, because as it turns out, having a generic rank 4 that can recycle cards in grave while netting you a draw is pretty universally helpful. Helpful. It was most effective in recycling one of extra deck monsters that were part of big combos, so you didn't have to run too many and clog up your extra deck. And hey, the more cards you shuffle into the extra rather than the main, the better chance you'll have of avoiding drawing what you shuffled back. So out of the entire rank 4 pool, it certainly ranks higher than most. Okay, so that's all the Gusto monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps. Contact with Gusto is a normal spell that targets two Gusto monsters in your grave and one card your opponent controls. Shuffle both of the first targets into the grave, then destroy that opponent's card. It does suck that this is vulnerable to DD Crow, but having some on-theme removal is better than not having any at all. Heck, it even takes care of cards in general, without having to be face up, face down, in attack or defense. Tailwind of Gusto is an equipped spell that can only be equipped to a Gusto monster. The equipped monster can't be destroyed by card effects, and you can banish this card from your grave and discard a wind monster to add a Gusto Speller Trap card from your deck to your hand. And while this can grab any of them, it doesn't exclude itself, so getting another copy of Tailwind is probably your best choice, especially because it has another effect based on the equipped monster's level or rank. If it's 4 or lower, you can special summon a Gusto monster from your deck with a different type than the equipped monster, and if it's 5 or higher, you can special summon a level 1 tuner from your deck. So, yeah, this card is basically the best thing to happen to Gustos ever. Putting it on most of our main deck monsters can get a complimentary monster for synchro summoning, getting that part of your deck online. If you already have Sfreeze, then you're in for a treat. Not only does the immunity to effect destruction pair nicely with the battle destruction immunity they have already, the level 1 tuner you summon with Tailwind's effect can be Eagle, which starts the entire OTK plan. Seriously, this reads like a custom card, and I'm living for it. And, on top of all that, it doubles your team's speed stat for 3 turns, what's not to like? Quillpen of Gul'dos is a normal spell that targets 2 wind monsters in your grave, and 1 card on the field. You shuffle both of those first targets into the deck, and if you do, return the other to the hand. This is another piece of removal that allows you to use your grave as a resource, though this time you can use any wind monster you tech in, not just Gustos. And while it doesn't bypass targeted protection, it does bypass destruction protection, bouncing everything from powerful monsters to annoying back row. It may not be name stamped as a Gusto card, but it certainly is a feather in the theme's cap. Blessings of Gusto is a normal trap card that targets two Gusto monsters in your grave, plus a third Gusto monster in your grave, shuffles both the first two targets into the deck, then you special summon the third. An excellent way to get back your powerful synchros, or to get the material you need to summon said synchros. Now, personally, I'd just run back to the front to avoid dealing with any bricks, and you're already shuffling your own cards back with enough effects so you don't also need this in the mix competing for space. It may feel wrong not to play a card meant for the theme, but remember, not every piece of support is a blessing. Dust Storm of Gusto is a normal trap card that keeps your opponent from activating cards or effects when Gusto monsters you control declare their attacks this turn. So it turns them all into Armades, which I guess is kinda cool? but doesn't really accomplish much, especially because that kind of effect is meant much more to stop your opponent's monsters from floating into other cards, not to protect your own monsters from cycling through your deck. Maybe we'll get a much more traditional aggro Gusto deck in the future, but for now, I wouldn't bother going through your bulk to dust any of these off. Our last card is Whirlwind of Gusto, a normal trap that you can activate only if you control no monsters. You target two Gusto monsters in your grave, shuffle both into the deck, then special summon a Gusto monster with a thousand or less defense from your deck. Now, I don't want to say this card is without merit. It can summon our biggest monster, Windar, as well as a multitude of floaters and psychics. 
but it isn't able to summon Reese, which is probably one of our best main deck monsters. It can summon fodder for Reese, but guaranteeing we get that creature swap on legs onto the field is the first order of business, making sure we have the fodder for their effect comes later. So really, I would not recommend taking this card for a world. Also, why is Winda on this card? They're the Priestess. We already have a Whirlwind of Gusto. Alright, that's all the Gusto cards, but what do we do with them? Well, we could try to cobble together some kind of Synchro Spam deck, but I feel like that takes away from the reason to play the deck. Sfreeze OTK! While we can invest in some general wind support, focusing on getting Sfreeze and Tailwind onto the board and making sure our opponent is in a position to take them out of the game is paramount. So what can we play to help them out? Win the Wind Channeler is a pretty sweet search card. If you pitch Guldo, Vidir, or any level 3 Wind Tuner, you can search out Pilika, Normal Summon them, and then use their effect to sync together Sfreeze. And since a lot of our cards have 1500 or less defense, it can grab a lot of monsters that we might need. And let's not forget Griffin, as pitching them for win will trigger their summon effect, helping to make up for the minus. While covering Wind Witches, I caught a bit of flack for not including Gustos, and... Yeah, that totally went over my head, but as it turns out, these two themes can work pretty well together. With the exception of Digusto Falcos and your Xyz, you can access all of your extra deck monsters under the Ice Bell lock. Wind Witches not only provide easy access to utility wind synchros like Crystal Wing and Barone, they also deal burn damage, making the Sfreeze loop easier to pull off with fewer resources. Foolish Burial Goods gets Tailwind into the grave, at which point you can use its own effect to search another copy. And if you discard a Griffin, you can get even more value! And speaking of Griffin, you can also get that effect trigger if you discard them for Twin Twisters. After all, we are going to want to make sure our opponent has as little interaction as possible, and clearing out back row is a great way to do it. To make sure our opponent has a sufficiently large monster for the Sfreeze loop to work, make sure to run Kaijus, especially Gadarla. Not only do they out very problematic monsters, they also have all the attack power you need to fulfill your win conditions with minimal material in deck. And bonus, Interrupted Kaiju Slumber is another great board wipe. But remember, the last thing to happen is the Kaijus being summoned, so you won't get any value out of popping Falco or Squirrow. As for a silly tech pick, Psychic Fuel Zone has some potential. We do banish cards with Digusto Eagles and Thunbolt, but none of our tuners are psychic, so we'll have to tech in some way to get them banished. Psyframe Gear Gamma might do it, and on top of being a strong hand trap, it'll get banished if you just leave it on board. And bonus, it's another target you can summon off of Itelli. Remember, while your non-tuners have to be Gustos, your tuners can be whatever you want. And that's all I have to say about Gustos. I'm gonna be honest, I learned quite a bit from researching this theme. I had initially written them off as a gimmicky combo deck, and while that is still very much the case, it's got a lot more tricks and tools at its disposal than I'd given it credit for. But it just goes to show that when you throw an army of tiny critters at a big monster, sending them to their doom to secure victory, anything is possible. No, that's... that's not inspiring. I'll just leave it in as filler audio, I'll come up with something later. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Do you think Gustos are ready to storm the competition, or are they going to need to wait for more favorable wins? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to show your support, ring that bell so you don't miss an episode, and share this video with someone you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander, Ashling Waltz, Nebula Navigators, Third Dynasty, Ava Goule, Adam Zagidel, Cryptic Gamer, Eric, Frankie, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh!, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Howling Zangetsu, Inblink, Ironic, John Manji, Julius Sneezer, Larachia, Mighty Action X, Meteornus, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Ruxith Sarani, Shooting Star 3300, The Fresh Prince of Con Air, The Wizard Moose, Tyler Cranston and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders, Bear Sharktopus Studios, Chaz Ghost, Corbinisms, Cozy Boat 275, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Jesus Garcia, Manga Pages, Marion James E. Picada, Nitromo, 
RGS, Rem T. Bright, Star Lord 777, and the Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. I'm only able to continue doing this thanks to the support of these lovely people, so if you'd like to be a part of these credits, as well as help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, please check out my YouTube membership or Patreon links in the description to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And if you'd like to hear me talk about another Wind-centric archetype, check out this video I made covering Wind Witches. And if you want to see two Yugi tubers going at it, check out Noah Jack and I's latest series progression polls, where your voice shapes the format. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.